I'll tell you a story about a woman who had a lazy son. The boy's name was Juan, and he was lazy. I'll tell you the hardest thing he would do each day. It was to make up his mind whether he should stay in bed late or whether he should get up early so that he would have more time to lie around and do nothing. In the wintertime, his mother would wake up feeling cold, and she would wonder if the fire had gone out in the stove. She would call out to her son, Juanito, levántate, mira a ver si hay lumbre. See if there's a fire, she would say, but Juanito wouldn't get out of bed. He would just call the cat to him, pss, 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 pss. And if he felt that the cat's fur was warm, he would yawn and say, Si, mamá, hay lumbre. And he would go back to sleep. And then in the summertime, when his mother woke up, her first thought was about her garden. That's where she grew all the food they got to eat. She would wonder if it had rained during the night. She would call out, Juanito, levántate, mira a ver si cayó agua. See if it rained. Juanito would call the dog, Chito, Chito. And if he felt that the dog's fur was wet, he'd say, Si, mamá, cayó agua. It rained and he would go back to sleep. But as lazy as he was, and even though there wasn't much food to eat, he grew up to be a very large young man. In fact, he got so big, his mother could not afford to buy cloth to make him proper clothes anymore. She dressed him in a long shirt that hung down past his knees, like a long night shirt what you call un camisón in Spanish. And that's what people started calling the boy. They called him Juan Camisón. When he would go walking down the road, children would, would run along behind him calling out, Juan Camisón, te falta pantalón. Juan Camisón, you don't have any pants on. But finally, he got so big, his mother couldn't afford to keep him around the house anymore. She told him he would have to go out into the world and find his own way of supporting himself. So Juan left the house. He went walking down the road. He had not traveled very far when he saw an old sombrero, an old hat by the side of the road. He picked up that old hat and put it on his head, and he thought he looked very handsome. And then he saw a spring by the side of the road, and he thought he would go over there and get a drink of water. But when he knelt down by the spring, he saw there were flies buzzing all around the water. He said to himself, I'm not going to share my water with flies. And he took off that hat and he swatted the flies. When he lifted the hat, he was amazed to see how many flies he had killed. He counted them. Una, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis, siete. He had killed seven flies. He was so proud of himself, he took some mud from beside the spring, and he wrote on the front of his hat, Soy Juan Camisón, que mata a siete de un arrempujón. I'm Juan Camisón. I can kill seven with one whack. And then after all that hard work, he felt tired. He leaned up against a tree. He pulled the hat down over his eyes, and he fell asleep. 
While he was sleeping, a messenger from the king's palace came riding along. And what you need to know about that king was that he was fighting a war with an enemy king. And his only hope of winning the war had rested on a hero named Macario. But the enemy had found a way to poison Macario's food. The great hero had died. So the king was looking for a new champion to fight in his army. And when the messenger saw the big man sleeping against the tree, and he read on the front of his hat, Soy Juan Camison que mata a siete de un arpojón, he thought, that man can kill seven with one whack. I'd better tell the king about him. He rode back and told the king what he had discovered, and the king himself came to ask Juan to join his army. The next thing Juan knew, he was at the army camp being dressed for battle. They looked around for some good armor he could wear. But the only armor that would fit such a large young man was the armor that had belonged to the dead hero, Macario. And the only horse that was strong enough to carry such a big man was Macario's own war horse. They dressed Juan up in Macario's armor they hoisted him into the saddle on the back of Macario's horse. Oh, poor Juan Camison, he had never been on a horse before in his life. And that horse was so fierce and so battle crazy when it felt someone on its back and saw the enemy army out across the field, it reared up on its hind legs and then went dashing across the field toward the enemy. Juan Camison bounced back and forth on the horse. He hung on to the mane with both hands and he started crying out, Me caigo! Agarrenme que me caigo! I'm falling, he said. Me caigo! But the enemy soldiers looked out and they saw that horse coming toward them and they said one to another, Isn't that Macario's horse? And then they began to recognize the armor they were seeing. It was Macario's armor. They said, How can that be? We killed Macario. And then when the horse got closer to them, they heard Juan hollering, Me caigo! I'm falling! But to them it sounded like he was hollering, Macario! And they said, Listen, it is Macario. He's hollering his name. Oh no, how can we fight against a man who can overcome death itself? And they turned and started leaving the battlefield. But just then Juan's horse carried him past a small tree and he thought he would grab the tree and pull himself out of the saddle. But the tree had very shallow roots. It came right up in his hands. He rode on, swinging the tree around his head. And the enemy soldiers all said, Look at that! He's tearing up the trees from the ground. We'd better run for our lives. And they all turned and ran away. And when the enemy king heard about it, he quickly sent messages of peace to Juan's king, and he returned to his own land. When the horse finally stopped running, they pulled Juan Camison from the saddle, and his king rewarded him with a sack full of gold. He carried that gold home to his old mother, and she danced up and down like she was a young girl again. But as for Juan Camison,
he went right back to bed. And he's probably still sleeping there today.